So here we are in our session. The first thing that we've done is actually created an auxiliary track that we've named Vox Aux, and we've actually plugged the microphone into this track. And I'm just going to have the singer sing along with this track just so we can make sure that audio is flowing and we've got everything going so far. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your. Okay, we've got a signal happening. So. The main thing that we want to do at this point in time is to be able to record our vocal through some sort of EQ or dynamics processor such as a compressor so that way we can kind of get the sound that we're looking for in the initial recording. Now in this case what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, plugin instead of using hardware because not everybody has hardware such as EQs or compressors we're going to utilize the plugins to let us do the processing that we want to do and then record it to an audio track. So the first thing that we're going to want to do from this point on is actually create a new audio track. And we'll call this vocal. Now at this point in time, since we know that audio is flowing through our auxiliary track, what we want to do is actually get the audio signal to actually feed the input of the audio track. So we're going to do this via the bus architecture of Pro Tools. So we click on the output selector of, our, of the auxiliary track and just select one of the available buses, let's say bus 5. Now since this is the output and we want it to feed the input of our audio track, just go to the input selector of the audio track, select bus, and match the bus numbers. So bus 5. The way we have it set up now, the audio signal from the microphone is coming into the auxiliary track, going out of bus 5, feeding the input of the audio track that will then come out of the speaker so that way we can record it onto the audio track. But the main thing that we're doing here is giving ourselves the ability to track through some sort of EQ or dynamics processor before we actually hit the audio track to record. We would do this simply by launching the plugin or any series of plugins that you might have on the actual auxiliary track. So I'm going to launch... Hmm. Let's go for channel strip. All right, so this has all the basic components that you can find in hardware as well. It has an EQ section right down here with filters, so that way you can do a low cut or a high cut filter. It has a full dynamics module with expander gate, compressor limiter, even a side chain input. But for our purposes, we're really just going to be kind of hitting it with a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ. So let's just go ahead and play our have our singer sing our tracks so that way we can start setting some settings and kind of see what where we're going to head with this another magical day the sun reflects on your face your eyes they sparkle like the clear blue sky the breeze is calling our name you wrap your arms around my waist I'll rest my head on your shoulder You hold me till the world stops spinning Okay, so there's a little bit of compression happening and I probably want to also do a little bit of EQing on this just to take away all those low frequencies that are just going to rumble around and not really do anything for the mix at, at the end. So let's just go ahead and do that. Another magical day the sun reflects on your face Your eyes, they sparkle like the clear blue sky The breeze is calling our name You wrap your arms around my waist I'll rest my head on your shoulder You hold me till the world stops spinning Okay, so we've made some changes. Hopefully, you know, you would do the changes according to your taste for what you're doing. But now what's happening is the audio signal is actually first coming from the microphone, going through our channel strip. And the way that we have this laid out, and this is something that you can do with any plugins, is, is actually first going through the EQ and the filter section, then it's hitting the compressor before going out of the output of the auxiliary track through bus 5, feeding the input of the audio track, which then you're hearing play out. So now if we actually just record the track, 
we can go through and do a record pass to let our singers just have at it and uh, and be able to at least lay down one take of the uh, of the entire song. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your face. Your eyes All right, so we've gone through with our singer and we've done a pass of the vocal track. After this initial pass, you might want to start going in and focusing on individual portions of the song to really let your singer kind of focus on areas that they might need a little bit of work on. Now, since we already have all of our routing done, we're feeding our auxiliary track, which is then processing with the EQ and the compression that we like for this vocal. We don't need to create another new vocal track. There's actually a really neat feature in Pro Tools called Playlists. Right next to the track nameplate, there's a little button it's called the Playlist Selector. When you click on it, you actually get the name of the track, which is the actual playlist name, and you get an option to actually create a new one. So it's going to ask you, what do you want to call the new one? So I'll just go with the standard naming, Vocal.01. It looks like what happened on screen that our previous recording pass, our audio, is gone. But it's actually not, because if you notice now, we're actually not looking at the vocal playlist anymore. We're looking at Vocal.01 and you have the ability to switch back to the previous playlists. The reason this is helpful is because now every single record pass that we do, we can actually do to its own individual playlist, and then we can utilize these playlists later to create a comp if we need to. So let's go ahead and just focus on the first verse. So we're, we'll zoom in a little bit here. So the first verse starts right here at verse 1. But I'm going to give my singer a little bit of a lead in. So we'll just go ahead and select from before the first verse. So that way it just rolls and records the selected area. So we'll give our singer time to just focus on this part. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your face. Your eyes they sparkle like the clear blue sky. All right, so we did that first pass. Now, the benefit of actually making a selection is that you can focus on a specific area and allow your singer the ability to uh, punch in if you need to, as well as just kind of get that one certain word or that one certain phrase right without having to go back and redo the entire part. So let's say, for example, in this case, our singer really wants to focus on this part of the vocal right here. All, day, all, day. all right, so what we can do is we can actually come in here and show our transport window because we're going to need a little bit of pre-roll and post-roll for this. So pre-roll is anything before the selection, post-roll is anything after the selection. So we can activate pre and post-roll here and you can see the flags here in the top in the ruler, the little yellow flag before the selection which indicates pre-roll and the little flag after the selection which indicates post-roll. And you can always type in the values that you want here to be active. All right, so now when we hit record, watch what's going to happen. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your face. It went through and actually played a portion of the audio before the selection. It punched into record over the selected range and then it punched out and but continued playing after the selection. This lets your singers or your musicians just focus on an individual part while playing along with the music. But at the same time, you might want to do a couple of different versions of this entire pass. So once again, remember playlists, which we have here, and we have an unlimited number of playlists per track. We can just go and create another new playlist. Let's just call it Vocal.02. And allow our singer the ability to record another pass. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your face. Your eyes are... All right, they might want to stop right there. Now, if they want to do it again, we can just go ahead and create another new playlist. Do the same thing. I'm going to turn off pre and post roll this time. Another magical day. The sun reflects on your face. Your now, every single time that you do a recording pass, since your signal flow isn't changing, remember, because everything stays static here about inputs and outputs, you can just create another new playlist for that track. 
Now the really interesting thing is when you get to the point of editing, this is where playlists really become handy. So let's go ahead and resize everything here just to give ourselves a little more space. All right. So the playlists themselves, you can toggle between them here in your playlist selector. Just go ahead and create a new one and we'll call it Vocal Comp. Or you can actually see all the playlists simultaneously per track by clicking on this track view selector button here where it says waveform. Notice in this list one of the views that you can show is the playlist view. And notice that attached to the track is every single individual playlist that we had created either for recording or for <coughs> for moving information around. And what it also has is every single playlist has its own individual solo button so that way you can go through and audition the different takes and never have to actually solo the tracks along with other tracks or any of that nonsense. Another magical day The sun reflects on your face Your eyes they sparkle like the sky the breeze is called all right so you can go through and you can actually audition each individual playlist all within the context of playback now at the same time what might happen is like in a lot of cases you might realize that using bits and pieces of different takes to create a composite or a comp as it's known that might yield a better result than just the entire take as a whole so what you can do is just by utilizing the same tools you, we always use for editing let's say that in our case we really like the first couple lines from this third takedown here so we can select those lines that we like and notice when we have a selection here in our playlist this little up arrow becomes active this is a copy and paste arrow and what it does is it moves the selection up to the main track playlist so this way we can go ahead and make our decisions while we audition everything back and, and figure out which parts we like and which ones we don't like select them hit the up arrow and it copies and pastes them up to the main track this is the way that so many projects are done because sometimes it's not as easy to get the perfect take all in one shot especially with the complexity of music and just with performance ability so don't be afraid to use these really powerful features to help you not have to waste a bunch of time within your session so that way you can really get to working on this stuff and really be able to edit quickly